What's good, Wild Ox Studios? Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the 5.5 versus UE 5.6 RHI performance comparison, apples to apples video. Um, so, quite a few people took an interest in this video. Um, it basically teaches you how to package out to multiple uh, RHIs and then use command line to swap between them. And then you can do, uh, you know, the same across two di different engine versions and get basically an apples to apples comparison within your own projects. Now, for me, I went with a very simple base project because I wanted to see, um, you know, just as a very, very simple deferred rendering project with Lumen enabled, uh, what would my total cost be? And um, pretty good results. I, I think we got 300 plus frames in DX11 uh, with uh, DX12 and um, Vulcan kind of, you know, hovering ar around the same performance, give or take a few frames. Um, but a little bit slower on at least my 2080 Ti. Uh, some video cards, you know, they're just going to deal with DX11 better. However, um, a couple of people reached out and they were like, yo, you did deferred rendering and you tested DX11, DX12, and Vulkan, but you didn't really touch on forward rendering too much. And that is true. I have another video that goes over um, optimization pipelines that talks heavily about the differences between forward and deferred rendering. Um, it would be basically uh, the rendering path performance overview videos. I have two parts to those, so go check them out if you haven't. Um, but today, uh, we'll be happy to let you guys know. Um, I, I did absolutely no changes to this project other than changing its default RHI. And because DX11 is SM5, um, in the previous video you'll see I toggled between SM5 and SM6, uh, you'll see that um, the top left PCD3D uh, D3D SM5 is uh, what is known uh, or shown there and um, so the big difference here being um, again this is forward rendering uh, you'll see my frame time is down to two milliseconds um, and that's the big kicker about forward rendering is it pays for everything in the base pass um, your base pass usually is a whole lot cheaper especially whenever you're optimizing your lights and which I've done in this project um, these are all distance field based lights until you get really close to them and then they swap in the uh, shadow maps um, so they're very very optimized these are actually spread apart point lights with a scale value um, so that the light itself is stretched along these fake material instance based flicker uh, uh, I would call them billboards so um, this scene is a, a, you know, a single directional light with cascade shadow maps and then I'm falling back to distance fields once you get to a certain distance away from the cascade shadow map. So again, even then the lighting pass is very simple. So um, in the previous video, the SM5 benchmark that I had for DX12 hovered around 360 I think at the best and I'm happy to report that you know, as expected, forward rendering is going to edge you out uh, a little faster than that in these simple retro, uh, low textile density, you know, um, low resolution texture based uh, projects. Now, keep in mind, as I've mentioned in previous videos, deferred rendering will scale better as you add more dynamic lights. It just simply will. Um, forward rendering uses a, uh, a forward plus tile based system that will cull, you know, um, d movable dynamic lights, but deferred rendering does a much better job of, of handling them once they get into the numbers of 100 plus lights in a single area. Um, if you don't care about that too much, you're using stationary baked or you're using fully baked GI and um, 
you know, you're only casting lights on, say, a handful of lights in the scene, or you're very, very, like, you're doing your dual due diligence of taking care of your lighting cost, falling back to distance field based uh, shadow casting anytime you can. You, um, you can make this thing run on pretty much anything in an SM5 Ford shaded pass. And um, as you can see here, the quality isn't that much different than um, deferred rendering. The thing that I also will point out is that with forward rendering, you have a really nice MSAA anti-aliasing method which means that you don't get mer uh, motion motion blow uh, motion blur <laughs> when you move around because this is not a tempor uh, temporal anti-aliasing method. It is hardware anti-aliasing. So MSSA MSAA takes place on the uh, video cards base pass along with all of your materials and your lighting. Um, it's it's as you can see I'm still hitting two milliseconds so it's extremely cheap to do uh, and you can go you know 4x MSAA um, but it's essentially super sampling the scene without actually super sampling the scene it's detecting edges and super sampling those edges and uh, it does a pretty good job um, for this retro aesthetic I simply disable the the anti aliasing method because I don't really need it. Um, and at full screen at 1080p native, it's 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 pulling off the look of this uh, higher res than Minecraft, but still pixelated 3D look that I'm that I'm going for. Um, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to to uh, you know follow up with the uh, addressing the questions that had been asked in the Wild Ox Studios Discord. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and consider joining the Wild Ox Studios YouTube family. Um, look forward to a video that I'm going to be doing um, in the future. Uh, we have kind of been, you know, teetering around. Um, I don't even want to put it that way. I, I have Godot projects. I'm an Unreal Engine developer by trade. Um, you know, my profession is Unreal. Uh, I've been working in Unreal Engine for a very long time. Um, I think I said it was uh, 20 years this year. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm comfortable in it. And uh, Godot, not so comfortable, but um, I'm learning it very rapidly. I've contributed back to source and I'm really starting to enjoy some of the uh, iteration time advantages that are there as well as like just some of the overall stability and performance gains that I can get in Godot and it's primarily been for XR and 2D stuff but what I would like to do is take this return to retro project and see how far we can push the in, uh, engine in it. 3D standpoint to see if I can get the same look and then we can do basically a performance comparison between the two um, so remember these numbers guys we're hitting you know uh, pretty close to freaking 500 frames it's like four I'll, I'll give it 465 let's do that so out here in uh, looking at the clouds uh, not really rendering any geometry or lights. The lights seem to be what the heavy hitter is here. But over here, we're hitting 465. If I'm looking at the lights, we're getting about 350 and some change, 360. Um, so I have this video up to look back at. Um, we'll be able to, to form basically like a base performance metric to go against. And yeah. I'll hit you guys with another Return to Retro series, uh, Godot edition. Um, until next time, happy developing and toodles.